hardest six, seven-ish months of my life. Um, a lot of bad stuff happened at the same exact time. In September of 2019, I started having some really big issues at um, my job. Turns out, some girls at my job found out about a raise that I had earned and they decided to work very hard to get me fired. Long story short, they succeeded. After I lost my job, I was denied unemployment. I could not find a job during the holidays at all. And then also during that time, yeah, I'm not done yet, applied to programs at the Yin Yang, spent $2,000 applying to programs, and I was rejected from every single one of them. Oh, by the way, me and my boyfriend broke up during that time too. It was a hard breakup, so yay. And so that's who is telling you, giving you this advice, and actually I'm not even giving advice, I'm just telling you what I did, what really helped me get through this darkest period of my life. I had no idea what my future was going to look like. It was, it just looked bleak to me. The myths of that, you know, people will have those verses like, okay, cast your cares on the God, you know, and worry for nothing, don't worry about anything. I would read those words and I was like, ah, I don't know what to do with this. I can't do anything with this right now. And I was like, why is this not working? I felt like an unfaithful, just inadequate Christian. Hello. Hello, it's Uche. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, let's talk about that little a-hole, that little monster called anxiety, and what to do to get through it. I am not just talking about sadness or worry. I'm talking about that fear of the unknown, that consuming fear, that consuming worry it has you paralyzed. That's what I was dealing with. Um, I heard this awesome saying, this quote, it says, like, the first lie of the devil is for us to think that God isn't good. And it's true, it makes us do crazy things. Like when you think that God's not good, like you're single, God's not good. So you know, I'll just lower my expectations a little bit. Um, in regards to finances, like okay, God's not good, so I need to hoard money now because God won't provide. It makes us, I mean, it drives us to greed. So the first lie of the devil is to believe that God is not good. I fought this lie by just reminding myself in the midst of being fired, in the midst of losing my boyfriend. I say lost, like he died, <laughs> we just broke up. Like no matter what was going on around me, I had to be like, God is good, Satan, so you can suck it. And people might, maybe you'll get upset with me, but I had to say that to myself and say like, you know, God is good, so suck it, Satan. That had become hashtag facts in my mind. God is good, like the sky is blue. Grass is green, yes. The sun is hot, ice is cold, God is good. So suck it, Satan. It's a little unconventional, but it helps. It helped me a lot. And it's really great is because no matter, even if you don't believe it at the time, it doesn't make it less true, so. It's an easy fact to memorize, okay? So, let's start. Okay, we're gonna start with um, the first thing that anxiety blinded me from, which was my priority. People say, priorities, priorities, no. If you look up the definition of priority, it's the first thing. You can't have more than one first thing. If you ain't first, you're last. Okay, so God is it, first on the list. God is good and God is surprised that um, God knows that the best thing for us is Him. And so the question that you have to ask yourself is, how is this bringing me closer to God? That's what I had to ask me. How is this anxiety? How is this worry? How is my issues with my job bringing me closer to God? And I had an answer for that. Because the more, the, like, when I lost my job, I had to cling to God. I had to cling so hard to Him. When I had my job, I was working so hard. I had my raise, I got my promotion. I was like, okay, I'm all in to my job. When I had my boyfriend, I was like, you know, I was actually willing to settle for some of the things that he was doing because I loved him. Losing both of those things, as hard as it was, it brought me closer to God, which is where I need to be anyways, because God is the best thing for us. So I read this a wonderful verse. He says, come to me, all those who are weary and heavy laden and he will give us rest. He tells us to take take his yoke upon ourselves. He says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Jesus says, hey, I'll trade you. <laughs> so it's not just giving stuff to him, it's us taking something too. He says the burden of spreading the gospel, loving others, is lighter than everything else. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try not to cry, but, but I began to see that so clearly, so clearly. In the midst of like going month after month after month, going through the holidays, New Year's, Christmas without a paycheck. What my mom, my sisters were like, apply to jobs. I was like, apply to jobs because I had to for unemployment. 
apply to jobs, apply to jobs, find work. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to do this YouTube thing right. I'm gonna try to make my videos quality. Let me give my all to God's kingdom this time first. Because usually it'd be on the back burner, it'd be a side hustle, side project. Um, during that time, those months, I had to learn um, Adobe Premiere, how to edit my videos, how to shoot my videos, how to light my videos, how to basically do everything by myself. And it wasn't easy. It was so difficult. But I had the time, and I had um, the time to learn it, and so I did. And so the second thing that anxiety blinded me from was my purpose. I forgot, you know, like I, I'm, I thought I'm here to work hard, to have a relationship, to get married, to have children, to have a future, to get a good job, to have, you know, insurance, to have uh, money, to take care of my family, to take care of myself. That became my purpose. Um, I wanted to do my YouTube channel. I wanted to do a podcast. I wanted to do all these things for God's kingdom, but with work, with my boyfriend, with my responsibilities, with my CG, with all these things, I put them on the back burner. So my work for the kingdom was not first. My purpose, I think, for being here, for being like, what I uh, me? I was not living that out. <laughs> I remember whenever I was um, struggling with my job situation and I was having the hardest time, especially in the thick of it, those awful ladies that were lying about me was doing the worst. They were like being really mean to me. I'm worried about this, I'm getting upset. These ladies are being so rude. My job was asking me to like stay later and work more, but I was like, I have Bible study, I have community group, I have my I'm volunteering at this thing called Region at my church. I was like, I have all these things to do. And I found myself getting angry. Cause I was like, man, I was like, you know what? I'm not even here for this. Like, if I died tomorrow, what would happen? If I died, what would happen? My goal in life is to get, is get to heaven and for God to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And then I know my life meant something. So I'm like, I'm not even here for this. That is the saying that helped me so much during this awful time. Because when Satan was trying to use that worry and that pain and that, that anxiety to make me put my hope in my work, that's what really helped me stay focused. So it helped clear that haze from my heart and from my mind and from my eyes. And then the next question I would ask myself was, what am I here for? Why am I here? And if you're a believer, you already know that answer, right? We are here to point people to Jesus. God says he put good works um, ahead of us for us to do. And that is what we are here for. That's what we're on this planet for. And of course, anxiety and worry and finances and health, they distract us from that. I was reading Proverbs with my CG. Shout out to CG. And it says an anxious heart weighs a man down, but good works cheer him up. Oh, I realized this whenever I focus my attention on God, when I focus my attention on my purpose, which is to spread the gospel, when I was thinking about, hey, I'm going to make this YouTube channel, when I'm going to do, I'm going to do this podcast, whenever I had those focus on how can I spread the gospel, I was excited about possibly going to Albania again for missions. I had so much peace. All right, and so the third thing that anxiety blinded me from and tried to blind me from was God's provision. And, and I'm not talking about like happenstance, oh, that just happened, it's a coincidence. Nah, I'm telling you, in February, I was forced to move out of my roommate's, it's my video, it's in my videos. I was forced to move out of um, former roommate's home because of a toxic conflict with her. At the time, I was, of course, paying rent because I was helping her to, you know, try to help her get that mortgage payment down. And I was supposed to actually find a place with my other roommate, but when I decided to move in with my parents, um, I, and I didn't have to pay rent, I was like, man, I'm really comfortable here. I don't wanna leave. I don't wanna leave and go, go pay rent somewhere. I'm comfortable. Um, and then when I lost my job, I had no rent to pay. My car had already been paid off. I had a couple of bills, of course, but other than that, I did not, I was completely not dependent on my salary from my job. So you can see God's provision. And if you can't see it, please like have your friends, have your other Christians remind you of God's provision in your life. Someone that you can tell the whole story to so they can see, hey, yeah, this, I see God working here. I needed that too. Sometimes in the midst of depression, in the midst of anxiety, you can't see God. You can't feel God. I'm sorry, let me just speak for myself. In the midst of anxiety, I could not see God. I could not feel God until God's people, my CG, my family, reminded me of it. And so that's what worked for me. That's what really helped me and how he is he might be using your life to provide for somebody else. Sometimes our heartache, our issues are not even about us. They're how we can help someone else. 
and that's just how big God is and that's how big picture he is and you can also ask God to reveal his provision if you cannot see it clearly and you don't feel like you have a friend that's going to tell you pray and ask God to reveal his provision and he will answer prayers because anxiety you can't get past it by yourself you literally have to look to something outside of yourself what what a layup for the gospel what a layup for God to really show who he is and for us to be his hands and feet in people's lives in the midst of an, an, an unseen enemy. And I'm talking about anxiety too, and Satan. All right, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your day. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please just share it. No thumbs up needed. I don't need it. Share it. I want people to know that there is hope in the midst of anxiety and depression. Um, Satan will not win.